and welcome to the FEZ show live, or technically live, live on the grid and the London E pre tracking XL. I'm with Mr. Jack Pickering. How are you, my friend? I'm good. It's nice to do an FEZ show where you can't see our bedrooms. Yes. It's, it's quite nice. It is very nice indeed. Talk to me about the race, first of all. I just want to get your overall reactions of the race. It was, an, it, was, it was an okay one. It was an okay one. It wasn't, it wasn't like over the top. It wasn't, it wasn't like one of the best races we've seen, but it was a very good race. Um, plenty of action up and down the field. Um, my heart goes out to Sergio Seti Camera for uh, losing the points on basically the last lap of the race. Um, but yeah, fantastic job by Jake. Um, Stoff's basically got one hand on the, on the, tro on the trophy now. Um, yeah, and it sets us up really nicely for tomorrow. Yeah, let's talk about Jake Dennis, because Jake Dennis had a really controlled race. And I put in the race report on Formula E zone that I thought the only time he looked vulnerable was at the start, because he had that real aggressive move to decide to cover off stuff with Van Dorn. Well, yeah, that's what that's uh, that's what you're going to do from from uh, pole position. You you, uh, you do have to go defend because because the the first corner here is a left hander and the second place guy is on the left hand side of the grid and so you do have to defend it a little bit. Um, but Jake had a stellar day. He was top in P2. He was quickest in uh, group qualifying. He was the fastest in every round of the duels. Um, and led from lights to flag. I think I think uh, I mean like perfection isn't. Uh, is what's always strive for in motorsport, but I think that was a pretty perfect day. Yeah, it was dominant, and especially after that second attack mode, like he just built a really nice cushion to Van Dorn, which was able to you know protect him against his fan boost. Well, yeah, he, uh, apparently he came over the radio with about ten minutes to go. Basically, just said, right, okay, only important stuff, only critically important stuff from here on out. I've got this in the bag, and so he 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 knew what he was able to do today, and. Um, and yeah, it, it paid off for him because, uh, yeah, a fantastic win, just like it was 12 months ago. Let's hear what Jake Dennis had to say when we caught up with him in the media pen. Yeah, it's just great, obviously, uh, to be back on home soil and get the get the second win, obviously, uh, two years in a row. So, yeah, I couldn't be happier uh, for my team and obviously myself. And uh, yeah, it's just been a great, great result for everyone today. You know, fastest in practice, uh, pole position, fastest lap in the race, and then obviously the race win. So. Completely dialed in, we just need to try and replicate this tomorrow and uh, yeah, try and score some big points again. Talk to me about that second attack mode because obviously you were managing the gap, managing the race and then all of a sudden you kind of like bolted, you kind of had a 1.5 second gap which you didn't have before that second attack mode. Yeah, like you said, it's just trying to manage what's the situation around you, you know, obviously the two modes at the front uh, had the possibility of working together so I just had to be smart and clever with that and then uh, yeah, when the opportunity arose to, to make the gap. Obviously I took it and the car was good enough for, to allow me to do that and yeah, we, uh, we executed it perfectly and uh, stuff ended up following me through. So uh, yeah, couldn't, couldn't be uh, more pleased for myself and the team obviously to do the, to do the correct strategy as well. Talking to me about qualifying, obviously putting it on pole. What's the difference like say at London do you think that's made you so competitive compared to other places? I just think I'm also in pretty good rhythm for myself, uh, just around the streets, uh, around here. So I'd say that just works in my favour. But also the car mechanically is very good, and uh, London's really slow speed circuit. So I think in sector three we've got a very strong car, and I think that's where we gap Stoffel today. And uh, yeah, we just need to keep exploiting that and keep fine tuning the car in some other places, uh, and then we can, uh, yeah be this competitive uh, at most of the circuits. So yeah, it was an absolutely great race from Jake Dennis, but let's talk about Mercedes now, because obviously you mentioned a bit earlier, obviously Stoffel Van Dorn, it was kind of a dream result for him today, you know, taking that second place, 26 points clear in the driver's title with three races to go. It was just a dream day for Van Dorn. I'll be honest, after qualifying, I was thinking that it was going to be a bit like New York, because uh, on the first day in New York, we had Van Dorn who was starting on the front row of the grid, and then you had Mortara in ninth and Evans and Verne who had that horrible qualifying was starting around like 15th, 16th, which was more or less what it was going to be the same today. But um, uh, but yeah, it was it was an absolutely dr it was an absolute dream day for Mercedes um, and uh, and for Stoff. He's basically got one hand on the championship now. Uh, he's got a 26 point lead with only three races to go, and that is an effective race win. So. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's it's just been a fan. It's just been a fantastic yeah, day for them, and I mean like double podium as well, which yeah. means that they are 37 points ahead in the uh, teams as well. Yeah, lots of people were saying that to him in the media pen. You know, does this change your strategy going into the race? Do you think it does? 
knowing now that he's got this cushion, that he doesn't have to attack technically as hard. Obviously in qualifying he will to make sure he's in as high up in the jewels, but when he gets in the race, do you think that is affecting his mindset or do you think he's actually just, as he said in the press conference, taking it race by race? Drivers always say, yeah, no, I'm going to take it race by race and that's, uh, that's everything. But I think at this point, I think he does have to consider that he can be a world champion in two weeks' time and there's a strong possibility of that now that he's got that lead in the championship by such a, a huge points margin. Um, I, I also spoke to Mitch Evans today who said, well, I, I'm going to keep on fighting until it's over. But he does, he does acknowledge that this, this points gap is absolutely massive now. And then talking Nick the Freeze, obviously coming home in third, quite an aggressive defence on Nick Cassidy towards the end of the race. Yeah, so I spoke to Nick Cassidy as well, and um, he wasn't too pleased with um, with uh, uh, Nick de Vries's, uh, def uh defence of third position. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think at the end of the day that uh, uh, that is racing. But um, we did see a few other drivers get penalised for defending far too much. So, I mean, like six one half dozen of the other, it's, I, th I think it's... Uh, up for all of you to decide whether you think it was too hard and stuff like that but um, eh, the fact that it was for Nick and for Mercedes another podium on top of Stoff finishing second um, yeah mega, mega day for Mercedes they've got a 37 point lead at the top of the championship Stoff has a 26 point lead just perfect for them right and let's go and hear what the Mercedes drivers had to say starting with Stoffel van Dorn I knew immediately when you know when Nick took attack mode Jake suddenly upped the pace a lot in the first, you know, in the first sector already, and I knew he was going to go. So I was just trying to ask my team, said, "What do I do? Is it like, do I have to take it, or do I do the opposite to Jake to try and, you know, undercut him or overcut him, and and yeah, see see if we have anything, anything possible to to try and beat him." But uh, yeah, um, I don't think it gave anything away. To be fair. We learned from today's race that Nick Cassidy behind you, of he came from seventh and fourth, used the overcut really well, um, ran late. Do you think that you can learn something from what he did, or is tomorrow's race completely different and you can't really take too much from today? I'm sure we'll, um, I'm sure we'll learn from what happened in this race. I haven't seen like all the race traces yet and see what everyone did, but uh, obviously it always depends on what position you are. At the front, it's you know you kind of try and secure the race basically whilst if you're back if you're at the back or coming from a little bit further down you're uh, you're trying to think of ways to to make your way back to the front and sometimes that's that's an offset strategy so it very much depends on uh, on the race scenario and uh, um, you know my team deals quite well with that finally from me was there a point in the race i know you were attacking and you were hoping to find something from dennis but was there a point in the race where you thought i'm going to settle for second uh well not really. I mean, you know, I was I was just trying to stay close. Um, but if there's no chance, there's no chance. So, you know, it doesn't. Even if you want to settle for second or not want to settle for second, if there's no opportunity, you can't do it. So, uh, yeah, I didn't have a chance. I definitely think we have room for improvement, especially on on race pace. Uh, I jeopardized my own race having clipped the wall, but regardless, I think Jake was a bit too too strong today. Uh, so I'm happy that we kind of managed to score. Uh, maximum points, um, at least within our capabilities, and yeah, um, that's it really. Talk to me about that defensive drive with Nick Cassidy at the end, because obviously you covered him off quite well, because obviously he was trying to get the switch back, that's the correct term, on you quite often in the end of the corner, and then you started to predict it um, in the closing couple of laps. Well, I was lucky that the track was obviously, um, yeah, well the track is quite difficult to overtake, um, but regardless, I, I was pleased to maintain uh, that position. So I suppose we should really talk about Nick Cassidy, because obviously he had a part to play in, in the fight that he had with Nick De Vries. But I was super impressed with his race today. This went with the overcut, took attack mode so late, was one of the last people to take attack mode, went from seventh all the way to fourth and was fighting for that podium. How impressed have you been with Nick since that win in New York? He's just been on fire, hasn't he? Like he was so quick in New York, and he took he took that into race two as well, where he got that pole position that was crudely taken away from him on air. Uh, and so yeah, and I, I think uh, I, I think that only like fueled the fire. I think what happened there, and he's just come here. He's just been extremely quick like, the last few weeks. He showed that again. He was actually disappointed that he didn't go further in the duels, but. Um, he was able to come back afterwards. He was able to 
get Gunter with his, with his uh, first attack mode and then with the second attack mode he was able to go through on uh, Askew and set a camera and then start harrying uh, uh, the Vries for the podium. I think it was a fantastic drive for him and um, yeah, that, that, that overcut really paid off for him. Right, let's hear what Nick Cassidy had to say when we caught up with him. Yeah, I mean, uh, lots of positives. The, the dual pace or the group quality was good. A um, bit upset with myself, I, I missed the first duel. Uh, I probably had the pace to go through, but I made a mistake. And, and that put a seventh probably instead of that top four kind of area where our race could have been different. Um, so then it was a challenge to get back to the podium and yeah. Do you think Nick was a little bit over the edge in terms of some of the moves, or do you think that was more or less fair? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the fact that your teammate got a penalty for uh, moving under braking, the fact that he... Do you, do you think that he should be with the stewards or something like that? Yeah, I think you think the same thing. So. I suppose we should quickly talk about Robin Frines, obviously Cassidy's teammate. Had an OK race, but was kind of the victim for the track debris that we saw, lots of tractor debris, which the drivers were complaining about. We were a bit confused why a full course yellow or even a safety car was not uh, called um, for the debris. What was your thoughts on that? There was tons of debris on circuit. There was more than enough for at least a full course yellow. I mean, maybe even a potential safety car. I think what surprised me more is because there was such a gap between Mortara, who was involved in that accident in turn one, and Tiktamu was running towards the back of the field. It was about 40 seconds. In that 40 seconds, I mean, I, I, I know that marshals are superhuman, so they can, so they can just run out, grab, all, grab some of the debris, and then go back off again with, um, and th they have their own track maps, so they know when the drivers are coming as well. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit perplexed why either they didn't, run out and make sure that um, that all the debris was cleared or a full course safe, uh, full course yellow or a safety car was not called because it was um, yeah it, it was littered with debris all over the track in the first sector um, and yeah I th well Ro Robin I think in the in the end that like, he 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 was running in eighth and ninth for a bit but he w he just fell back through the field um, yeah, he got a five-second penalty as well for the, the uh, for defending too hard on Lotterer. And, yeah, I think his day was just gone from there. Right, let's hear what Robin Frines had to say when we caught up with him. A lot of hits, uh, but I think the main um, effect on the race was me hitting the inside wall on 18 when the single was bent. And I did the track board, so uh, since then everything went downhill. But, I mean, sorry, but... The, the amount of debris was quite ridiculous. I was actually, I wasn't asking for it, but I was hoping for a safety car, but it was quite obvious, because if you drive over this carbon, it's easy to uh, have a puncture. Yeah, and talk to me about, obviously, the end of your race. So when did you clip that wall then? Because obviously you were flying right low end of points and you ended up quite far down. Uh, before halfway. So uh, somewhere a quarter of the race, I think after uh, 10, 12 laps, I hit the wall. And then at the beginning, I was I did some setting change to try to compromise, and it was okay, but it would just get worse and worse and worse. Obviously, Nick had a very good race today. So, what can you go back now and learn from maybe him to help you tomorrow? Uh, well, he has a different car than me. Uh, it's not so easy to change my car to his. It's not really possible. So, we need to see what we can change. Uh, obviously, my car at the beginning was quite good. The first couple of laps, I felt really strong. Let's say the first five laps. And him was the, kind of the opposite. The first five laps he was a bit struggling and then he was getting quicker. Um, but yeah, the race is 40 laps, not five. We have to talk about Dragon. What a day it could have been for Dragon. I suppose it's great that they've got pace, right? They've got pace. Given actually showed that. Sergio said the camera showed that. It, they were just unlucky. The efficiency problem still biting them in the end, really. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh my heart sunk when I saw Sergio just slip down the order uh, when people started crossing the line. Um, yeah, it, it, it was actually a fault. Basically, Dragon were doing the race completely blind with their energy management, so they had no idea what uh, what figure they were hitting. And then on the final lap, what usually happens is that the driver has like a display come up. Well, as soon as they cross the line, they says, "Okay, you have this amount of power remaining." Um, 
go, uh, and, and then you can and then you can manage your energy for the rest of the lap to make sure that you get over the line. Now that display didn't come up for Sergio today, and that's what cost him massively. He was actually speaking to um, Lucas Degrassi um, just before I just before I spoke to him, um, and Lucas was like, "Oh, you had a seven-second gap. You could have just cruised round." But they didn't know how much energy they they, they had. They didn't know that they 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 could, they could have had that opportunity to cruise around and get two points in the end but um yeah uh i'm truly gutted for them however they showed great pace today and they think that they can just go on and do this again tomorrow yeah annoyingly like antonio Giovinazzi, when i spoke to him was a bit worried he was like yeah we can't really do much to solve our issues uh for tomorrow which is a bit of a shame and it's quite interesting talking to the drivers a lot of the drivers even like at mahindra and so forth saying that they've got a lot of limitations and they're working around these limitations yeah, I, uh, it's it's um, it's a disappointing that they can't really fix it tomorrow. I mean, like, that's that that's just the nature of Formula E in double headers. It means that like once you've done one race, you go to sleep, wake back up, you're doing the exact same thing all over again. Um, and so yeah, it, it doesn't allow for that time to be able to fix it. But um, it's nice to see these like well, I don't want to call them back markers, but the midfield, so to speak be up there fighting for these big positions um, Sergio think that, uh, thought that he could have um, finished around 5th or 6th had he had um, that in information available to him throughout the race today but um, alas it was not to be and um, unfortunately yeah. one, of, uh, one of the teams in the paddock still remains pointless Yeah, as I said, a, a day really to forget for Dragon but let's hear it from Sergio Sette Camera and Antonio Giovinazzi starting with Sette Camera So the car ran out of energy and the reason it ran out of energy, we're still looking at it, but the systems were down, the energy management system, so the guys in the garage didn't know how much energy was in the car. And I didn't get my last lap dash, because usually when you start your last lap, the dash switches, shows you how much energy is left, so that you, you manage it, that you actually made it to the end of the race. And we, I never got that as well. So there was a system problem on the car. And um, that's the reason we, we didn't finish the race, we just ended our battery too soon. And the reason it hurt so much is that we had such a big gap behind, we could have cruised around, could have easily maintained position, finished the race, no problem. And just because of a systems problem, we don't take any points home. And also, if, if the system was working correctly as it should, I think we, because the, the best way to go to finish the race is to spend equally your energy through the race. So if we did that since the beginning, I think we could have kept P5, P6, something more reasonable, so even better than P9. So there's tomorrow that's the only good news yeah well your performance this weekend has been fantastic obviously p1 in in practice one yesterday you you got p4 on the grid today um and you and you were fighting throughout the the, the entire race you're in the points so is tomorrow just is tomorrow just a new day where you're just able to do that all over again have you learned anything to, from today apart from you know with the whole energy management shutdown and stuff like that that, that you can take into tomorrow uh, well, we, we, we've, we've seen which problem we have to fix for tomorrow, um, but I won't, I won't say like we'll pretty much do the same because I mean qualifying was already good, so even to match what we did today is already going to be a very difficult thing to do. And then the systems problem with the race, the engineers knew from lap one we could see there was a problem on the, on the, on the system, so they will fix it for tomorrow. Uh, yeah, in quality, unfortunately, I, I touched a little bit the wall, the inside one, and uh, yeah, I couldn't do the second run. Uh, and then yeah, in the race again we had uh, an issue with soft since lap one so yeah we we drive just to do a little, little bit of laps and a uh, little bit of the race and then we we stop so uh, yeah for the bad day today uh, let's see what uh, we, we you know fortunately we have another day tomorrow in the same track so let's see what we can do tomorrow yeah obviously a lot of positives from the team obviously there's there's pace inherent pace in the car what do you think you can do because Sergio's obviously he struggled on uh, energy management and, and battery uh, what do you think you can, how do, can you change that for tomorrow? Uh, to be honest, in the race, I don't think we can change much. Uh, we can do just again, uh, try to do a good qualifying. And then uh, if you are in the front in the race, we need to just really defend. Uh, this is our, our target for tomorrow. I suppose another person that we have to talk about is Oliver Askew. What a day he had finishing fifth. Oh, it was a mega day for him. Uh, yeah, fifth, fifth place is by far and away his best result of the year so far. Um, it's good to have him score another set of points. He, he really enjoys this circuit. The, uh, the, the fact that the inside is so high grip, it's, it's 
what he said. It's, it's what he's used to. It's, it's what he excels on. So yeah, absolutely fantastic that uh, that he was able to capitalise. I think that and, and Andretti have just had a fantastic day in general. They're they're kind of in no man's land in the constructors' championship at the moment. They're they're nailed on for P7. Mahindra and Nissan can't get anywhere close, and it's be very unlikely, even if they had the same result tomorrow, that Andretti would get anywhere near Porsche and Envision uh, in the Battle of the Fifth. So they are kind of in no man's land. However, I think today's been fantastic for them and um, Oliver has really developed this season and uh, it's nice to see him be there. I think uh, I think he, uh, after he was in the duels in Marrakesh, he fell away in the end but uh, nice to see him stick there and uh, yeah he really enjoys this circuit and he really enjoyed the race today. Let's hear what Oliver Askew had to say. Yeah every weekend is, uh, is a new learning experience. Um, this track seems to suit me a bit more because it is I think it's the most high grip track we go to this year and coming from the series that, that I come from that's uh, a bit less of a shock so um, yeah, uh, very happy with the day. Obviously, the cars are performing well. Jake winning the race and also winning here last year. So um, happy to, to arrive in a, in a good window, and I felt confident right away. So, um, yeah, all the play for tomorrow now. Yeah, what do you think that you can learn from today to help you maybe even push for a podium, let's say, for tomorrow? Yeah, um, little things, honestly. Uh, just track time for me is, is, is helping. So, I mean, these, these guys around me know the track. Uh, very well from from last year, so um, it's usually the second day on these double uh, race weekends where I start to get going. But uh, yeah, with that said, I, I hope tomorrow I can get a couple spots more. And then finally, for me, what's the biggest thing that you've learned so far this year? Biggest thing I've learned: uh, never give up. That's it. I know it sounds cliche, but uh, in Formula E, especially, it's um, yeah. Every every weekend is new, and you just got to keep. Uh, yeah, keep your eyes eyes forward and your and your chin up, but no matter what. I suppose we have to now think about Jean Eric Vernon. Is his title hopes effectively now over? Yeah, basically curtains, isn't it? I think even recovering a 27 point uh, gap coming into this weekend was going to be give or take. But the fact that it was it was another non score uh, non point score f finish for him. Uh, it's been a while since he's had three on a trot where he hasn't scored at all but um, yeah it's just been disappointing from um, from him today after he was Mr Consistent for the entirety of the season up until New York City um, so yeah I think I think we more or less have to say yeah no it, it is curtains for him I, I, it, it was baffling today where the pace for DSC Cheetah was because yeah. they were absolutely nowhere in the group stages of qualifying um, and then admittedly Antonio Felix da Costa came through to finish seventh but Vern was just nowhere at all today. Yeah, and that's what Vern was saying as well. He was just confused. It's like, yeah, just no pace in qualifying, you know. And then obviously he had the collision with Buemi in the race, and he said that basically stopped me from charging through the field. It was just, it's like when the luck's with you. I think that's kind of been his season. When the luck's been with him, he's ridden it, and it's been great results. When the luck hasn't been with him, it's just been a disaster. Even then, I think this season, like, he's had that opportunity to take wins of the races. So like in Jakarta, he arguably should have won that one, but um, Mitch um, had a better strategy and was able to make that diving move into, I want to say turn five, it's been a while since I was in Jakarta, but um, uh, but yeah, it's, um, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's it hasn't been, I mean, like for, I think anyone would take the season that Jeff has had up to this yeah. point, but, he wants to win and he hasn't won yeah this season at all right let's hear what john eric Vern had to say when we caught up with him we just clearly lacked some pace this morning in qualifying we have to understand that for you know in order for us to be better tomorrow um and uh, yeah in the race it was a race full of incidents and uh, no points at the end you know so no points to to dwell on on this race just let's focus on, on tomorrow's race and uh, try and uh, you know leave uh, leave London on a high note. Yeah, talk to me about the incident with Boemi because we didn't really see it. We saw you kind of push, but we didn't really see the end of what happened. Just sort of what happened there because you fell a couple of positions down. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I lost everything in, in the race because there, you know, it just lunged me and uh, completely went to to hit me on, on the side of the car and I went a bit in the barrier and lost it all. 
And in, in terms of tomorrow, then what have you from just feeling what you've gathered so far? What do you think you can improve for tomorrow? I don't know. We get to work now. I suppose one man who's had a really good race in that Nissan was Maximilian Gunther. Now, interestingly, obviously, he was fine for six, great qualifying, kind of ran out of energy at the end, which has kind of been a small issue Nissan have had pretty much all season. Yeah, I think he had a fantastic day until about 200 metres down there. Um, yeah, it, it was um, yeah, no, it was a great day for him. Uh, he was battling in the points throughout the entirety of the race. The first time he got into the dual format this season, which is fantastic for, uh, for him, for Nissan. Um, but yeah, just ran out of energy whilst coming over the line and that dropped him a couple places. Um, he was still able to finish eighth unlike Paul Sati Camera, but, um, uh, but yeah, yeah he, he had a fantastic day and he's actually been probably struggling in terms of like points this season. Um, uh, it, it's actually quite similar to uh, Monaco where he ran out of energy on the last lap and he fell from seventh to I think 13th or 14th or something like that. So. Um, uh, so, yeah, I think it's good that he's got some more points on the board. I don't think he's broken double figures yet, but, um, yeah, it's nice to see him back towards the front. Yeah, let's hear what Maximilian Gunther had to say. Yeah, great day for us. Uh, finished P8 and or within the top eight in all sessions. FP2 quality race, so, yeah, fantastic, I think, for, for, for us, with our package. Uh, we really maximised everything today and yeah really pleased with how qualifying went with a, with a top six result as well uh, top eight in the race is, is great for us and yeah a lot of lot of fighting a lot of action today in the race especially the, the track is great you know it's it's really very enjoyable for us to to drive here in particular in qualifying on one lap so yeah really uh, good day talk to me about the end were you low on energy did you have a problem and if you were low on energy when did you realize that you were quite tight, running it tight on energy uh, yeah, I mean, in fact, uh, there were some differences on energy level on all cars, let's say. Some people had more, some people had less compared to me. And I was a bit in like a sandwich situation. So on the one hand, I, I wanted to, and I had to attack uh, Oliver Askew for, for P5. Uh, on the other hand, I had Mitch behind me with fan boost, so he was attacking me really hard in the last lap and uh, obviously with a very quick car behind me so um, yeah I, I kind of felt like I did what I had to do as a, as a racing driver defending Mitch and as well trying to, to get P5 and then at the end it was very very tight with, with energy obviously and this is why uh, yeah, we ended up in P8 which uh, yeah, is still a great result and uh, which I'm, I'm happy for. Well that's pretty much it Pico, we've had an absolutely amazing day and we still got one more race tomorrow. Yeah, uh, it's the joy of these double headers. I mean, uh, just one day isn't enough, so we're going to do it again tomorrow. Um, I, but it is also a bit tiring because obviously it is quite long days. I've actually uh, today was uh, fantastic to have the longest line I've had all season. Um, I, I must admit, I've not got to wake up at seven thirty. Everyone, seven thirty. Normally practice one five, is yeah. Normally practice one is started yeah. at half past seven just for context. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I've. I think the earliest I, I've got up this season is five. I think that was for Monaco, but um, yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So delighted to have had um, a mini line today, uh, and I can have a mini line tomorrow as well because um, practice one doesn't get going until ten to nine tomorrow. So yeah, practice one, practice three. I can't, I can't remember my practice. FP three, but technically it should be FP one because it's a new race weekend. Yeah. But you know, it Formula E things. So who's your money on for tomorrow then? The thing is, Jake Dennis, he's not in this championship hunt. He can go all out and do it all over again if he really wants to. Um, I'd, I'd like to see um, the championship, um, the, uh, the other championship three get one over Van Dorn purely because I'm a man who loves the show. I want to go to Seoul with four people firmly in the hunt for the championship. Because that is a good story. And I think it shows that um, this championship has... I mean, like, obviously we've got the new format. Because like, last year, going into the final race with like 18... Uh, for the final weekend with like 18 different people who could win the championship was quite ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I'd like to have a story where four people... Because I think that will be a nice number. We had four people for the F1 in 2010, I think it was. And so that, that was a fantastic finale. Um, but yeah, I, I I just hope that it's going to be a good race. I hope that I hope the dragon make amends from today. Um, 
but yeah, um, who knows? That's the thing with Formula E. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put my money on the line, and I have a feeling Nick Cassidy, I just have a feeling, I just think since his... Strong, strong since, choice. Since his, you know, upturn in form um, in New York, he's just been brilliant. So I, I'm putting my money on, on Nick Cassidy for, for tomorrow. But that has been everything. Thank you so much. And we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, Don't know where. Knows. Maybe not on the grid this time. Yeah. We'll find another cool place, if you want to call it cool. Um, a place to do, to do this one. Maybe in front of the podium or something. Going to do it in Iceland. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> shop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if there's one near. Yeah, <laughs> I don't you know. know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, on that note, we'll leave you. Have an amazing evening, and we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.